find themselves. And I think that you would find across the board that when an actor is doing that for a, a voice in an anime, that they're doing very much the same thing with their physicality and their carriage and their posture and the way they're standing and moving if it's a you know 12 year old versus a 70 year old. Like for Miss Merry Christmas, she's a mole. So I, would, I sat with my legs like far apart and kind of cr crunched up to mm -hmm. record that character. I could not have recorded Alina from Claymore the same way because she's very right. erect exactly. and tall exactly. and regal. Different sound. An acting type. I think that that is a blessing about voice acting because I think it does, for a lot of people anyway, happen a lot less in voice acting because you don't have the physicality to consider, like you won't see our faces. So. And again, yeah, I mean, you can gray your hair and, and you know age yourself on stage and stuff, but they're more likely to go with an older person. But with voice acting, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, every once in a while, there'll be a situation where they're like, well, we have you know, these children and we want to bring in real kids because we want to get like kind of an authentic sound. But a lot of times, children are voiced by, usually by women. But <laughs> the boys, yes, get to be voiced by women. But we get all the big yeah, monsters and ogres and you know, things like that. Now I don't have to wear a big gigantic prosthetic costume. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 a lot easier with the voice acting. Yeah, every every audition is a new opportunity to do something new. That's one of the things I really like about voice acting as well. New new show, new characters. You know, it's it's everyone's game. So I like that quite a bit. And yes, uh, this may be a bit off topic, but how hard was it to break into the you need a really big crowbar. <laughs> I think it's kind of like, it, it's kind of tough. It's like being a musician. I mean, a musician makes a demo CD, you know, of their music, and they can sing, and they mail it out to, like, you make hundreds of CDs, thousands of CDs, and you mail it out to all the different studios and you just hope that somebody will bite and say yes I like this or no you sound too much like everybody else that I have in my cast or everybody else in my roster so I don't need you so it's it's tough in the beginning I guess until you get that one big break and then you can branch off into other areas and people will notice you so I thought it was kind of tough in the beginning but it's different that's now where, where we live than it used to be um, yeah well the whole industry is Specifically about anime, yeah, it's atrophied considerably. Um. And again, it's it, it is the, it's the the two words, voice and acting, and really what it does come down to is you really do kind of need both because um, there are a lot of people who are like, well, I can do lots of different voices, I do impersonations, my friends really love it, and then it's like, well, what stage experience do you have? Have you worked on any film? Have you done? And a lot of times I'll get people like, oh, well, I haven't really been like, well, then, you know, by all means, I'm not saying you can't, but they feel like you go out there and get that experience. And on the, the same token, I've worked with a lot of stage actors that are like, oh, what's that voice acting thing like? Wow, that sounds like a good paycheck. And I'll be like, well, you know, I mean, you can give it a shot. And every once in a while, if there's somebody who I think, you know, might be able to pull it off, uh, you know, I would, I would suggest them to the studio. But a lot of times you get stage actors and because they're really good and they're great on stage and they can play multiple different roles and things like that, but then with just their voice, now this is, you, you bring that acting forward, but can you do anything with your voice? Like you could be a great actor, but maybe you have a lisp or something like that and it works fine if you're on a stage production and they can kind of overlook that, but now if you've got some sort of like vocal impediment and you're just doing voice work, it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's the death now. It's like, well, you're a great actor and you can really sell it, but we hear this thing, this wheeze, or this sound, or, you know, this nasality, and it's just not working on the mic. And, so. wow. and also cold reading skills, because if you're doing a play, and maybe you have some kind of a, if you're dyslexic, or you have some other kind of issue, you have time to, you have time to memorize the script, you can work around those issues, but for anime voice acting, the ability to do really, really good cold reading, it, there's, probably nothing else that will serve you more than that.
Um, I think actually anime work has made it easier for me now when I audition for shows because people will sit there and be like, I've got to study the script, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Let's go. <laughs> I, I think that too. It, it, that just, skill set in the, is huge. Yep. And you increase it so much. And I think about how easy or difficult or whatever it is to break into different aspects of the industry, a lot of it is timing and um, kind of where you are. And I, okay. someone called me one day and told me there was an audition. I went down and I got hired. That's there the same thing that happened to me, right. and both of us knew those people from theater. Exactly. So, See, so in, in, a, in a, like, I guess the most basic way of answering the question, no, it wasn't hard for me at all because someone called me and told me there was an audition. But the only reason that person called me and told me about the audition was because he already knew that I was an actor and they were looking for actors. And also, I got hired very, very early in the industry at a time when I was competing against no one. I mean, I was competing against other actors, but there was no one in the state of Texas that had done any voice acting, apart from like maybe doing radio commercials or something, but no one had been in an anime. So it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm going into this studio and all of these other people have done so many more animes and I, no one had done any anime. So we were on a very level playing field at that time. So if you were going to go to Texas now, well, there's thousands of people there that you would be competing against that have all of this incredible experience um, in anime voice acting. And like I said, the jobs have shrunk down so yeah, much. Ten, ten years ago when we were all auditioning, I think there were what? 10, 16 people when you started, maybe, at animation, and when I started like 25. She started with, there was a handful of the six or eight of you there? The, at I, uh, well, the, the company started. of ADV had about six employees, but as far as like the voice actors they were using, well, of course at that time there were none until they started sort of building up a pool of people. Yeah, and now I think there's what, 700 in the pool? Of oh, I, it, hundreds, I mean, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. And so um, this difference from 20, 10 to 15 to 20 people to 700 people. Right. <laughs> and, and there are, you know, experienced um, anime actors in, in um, Austin, in Dallas, in Houston, and then, I mean, New York and L.A. are their own different things because they already really had established voice acting communities there from um, before anime, from like doing, you know, uh, prelay cartoons, western cartoons and things like that. But uh, it's, it's a very competitive industry and I always say that the reason it's appealing to you is the same reason that it's appealing to everyone else, which is basically, wow, I don't like